So first starter for you, we've got Italian Italia cuttlefish, but there's no pasta in this dish. What we've done, the cuttlefish is made into lovely little long strips remembering, uh, resembling, sorry, the pasta. What I'm gonna do, get my broccoli and tentacles. They're gonna go in the oven, three minutes, first of all. And then you see this lovely little cuttlefish cracker that we've got here, this is tapioca based. Uh, with some of that cuttlefish ink going inside. That's gonna go in the oven for two minutes, one, two minutes just to crisp it up, so that will go in shortly. And I've got my bowl just here. I've got my radishes, nicely thinly sliced, and I've got my cuttlefish. Get some of your dressing. This is only a little soy and sesame dressing. With a little bit of ponzu in, which is nice and citrusy. So get a little of that. Spoon that over your tagliatelle. I like to add a tiny bit of extra seasoning as well, up to you. Then get a little pair of uh, tweezers or a spoon, whichever you prefer. Get that in there. Give that a nice mix. And as well, a tiny bit of rape oil on your radishes and a little bit of seasoning. Quick rinse. I'm going to get my little cracker just into the oven as well. There it is. Then what you want to do is try and pile that cuttlefish up in a bowl as if it was the pasta. So this is where you're really aiming for it to look like that. Lovely little strands of tagliatelle. So we'll get all that down. We've slow cooked this cuttlefish so it's lovely and tender. A bit more going in there. See I'm just curling that with the with the forceps as I place it. But again, it's nice and quick to do. Final bit on there. There we go. Okay, then what we'll do, let's grab out our tentacles and our cracker. So you'll just hear the cracker just sizzling away. So that's gonna be last on the plate. Take your forceps again, and then the broccoli. See, I'm just gonna get a little bit in there under that tentacle. Another little bit on the other side, like so. I wanna still see everything. Now I've got those beautiful seared tentacles. Again, slow cook, but they've got a lovely barbecued flavor. So that's all nicely dressed on there, like so. Then what we'll do, take some of our little pink radishes and just place those, get a bit of height. It's that lovely pink little effect just rising up, adds texture, a little crunch and that pepperiness. Then I'm gonna take some of my pieces of cracker and again, be really light with these, they're very delicate, and just sort of snap them you know, really to sort of like fit a little bit more on there, not too much. I want to see everything going on, all looking beautiful. Finally, let's go back, dress him. You see, I'm just kind of dressing it away from the cracker. I don't want that cracker to get soft. But you want a really good bit of that dressing on. It's the key to this dish. Plenty of those little sesame seeds in there. And that is it, little wipe. Really, really tasty tagliatelle and cuttlefish radish and cuttlefish in cracker. Here we go, lovely piece of ribeye. We prepped it all for you. It's all nicely rolled with serrano ham around the outside. This is going to go in the oven at 10 to 12 minutes. So let's get that in. 10 to 12 will be nice and sort of medium rare. So if you want it a bit longer, of course, another five, six minutes. Um, the garnishes. It's a little bit of pomana, but we've cooked it in uh, beef dripping. So when that heats back up, we'll have this lovely beef dripping uh, kind of melted, just give it a little base in there. That's gonna go in for about 10 minutes just to heat up. And then a little mushroom, uh, which we've char grilled, lovely little garnish to go over beef, four to five minutes in the oven just to warm up. So they will go in once my beef has had a little bit longer. And remember, most importantly with the beef, when it comes out, rest it four minutes, I'm suggesting. Rest it a little bit longer if you prefer, of course, but it needs to rest so the meat can calm down and then it will be not tough uh, at all. A little bit of watercress puree, red wine sauce, both of those just on the stove. They're gonna get warmed up last second. And then Bernays butter. It's light Bernays sauce. 
This has got all the ingredients in there. It's got shallots, it's got tarragon, it's got that vinegar reduction. That's going to go onto my beef when it comes out of the oven, then it will all start to melt. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so, then I'm going to show you how to put my rib of beef together. So nearly beef ribeye time now. My ribeye is just there, that's been resting. I've taken a little string off of it when it came out of the oven and I've sat my Bernays butter just on the top. So you can just see that now all starting to melt, ooze, butter over the beef, lovely. So let's get our garnishes. Remember we've got cloth, there's my beef dripping potato, little grid griddled mushroom as well. Right, what we'll do, let's take some of our watercress puree. Nice little spoon of that. You can of course put more on if you prefer. Now take my lovely little dripping potato. I'm putting a tiny bit extra salt on mine. There we go, some dripping potato on there. Then we'll get our beef. Again, that's beautiful and rested now. Look at that, absolutely lovely. So the butter is gonna all start to melt all in between. And I'm just gonna get my mushroom just on the side. It's all coming together now. Red wine sauce, just a little bit over the mushroom. Like so, just have a bit on the table if you like as well. And there we go. That is my little ribeye, or big piece of ribeye, should I say. Bernays butter starting to melt in there, beef dripping potato, watercress, mushroom. Hope you enjoy this one. Uh, really, really rich dessert here for you now. This is a salted caramel slice. Comes to you all wrapped delicately wrapped so just carefully take it out. I've allowed this to just come up to room temperature. It's really really important. You can see that caramel it's all, almost got that wobble on it. So just tidy up those edges. That's going to go onto my plate like so. And then garnishes we've got lovely beautiful big raspberries. We've got chocolate shavings and we've got this little raspberry gel in here. So I'm gonna first of all just cut the end off this compostable bag. Give it a little pipe just on the board so you know how it's gonna go. And then pipe, pipe, pipe. Simple. Then let's get some of those raspberries. They're beautiful and big, lovely and juicy. So just carefully kind of place them all around the plate, like so. Almost there, chocolate shavings. Keep them in the freezer until last second. And then just arrange them on the top. Try and not handle them too much because they'll obviously start to melt. But get a nice bit of height on the top of there. That's why keeping them in the freezer is a great little trick because then even if your heat of your kitchen, heat of your fingers, going to give you a little bit of time to work with. You've got certainly like a minute or so before that's going to start really warming up. So a little bit more in there. I'm happy with that. So super simple dessert there but big big flavours. Salted caramel tart, bit of chocolate on the top, plump raspberries and a raspberry jelly.